Here we're given a difference equation and we're asked for the transfer function. So we're asked for the relationship between y of z and x of z. So remember, the transfer function is simply y of z divided by x of z. And what we're given is the relationship between y of n and x of n. So by taking the z transform of each term in this difference equation, we should be able to rearrange and find the transfer function. So we take each of these terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'd find the z-transform of each. So the z-transform of y of n is simply y of z. x of n is x of z. y of n minus 1 is simply y of z times the delay factor z of z to the power minus 1. And y of n minus 2 delayed by two samples that's simply y of z times z to the minus 2. So each term, we take its z transform. And when we have these delays of one sample and two samples, these, are, these correspond to z to the power minus 1 and z to the power minus 2. Now, that still hasn't given me my expression as a ratio between y and x but I can simply rearrange. So what I can do is bring all my y terms to the left side, and then I can say y of z times 1 minus half z to the minus 1 minus a quarter z to the minus 2 equals x of z. And what I'm after is the rela a ratio y of z divided by So my final step is h of z equals y of z divided by x of z, which is simply 1 divided by 1 minus a half minus a quarter. So that's my transfer function. If I want, um, I can simplify that by multiplying by z squared over z squared, just to get rid of the negative powers there. Give me z squared z minus a quarter. And that's equivalent, it's just slightly nicer looking without negative power to z. So that is, there is my transfer function h of z. Now part b asks for the z transform of a discrete time signal. And this particular signal only has two values, two ones, or two non-zero values, two ones at n equals zero, and n equals two. So we can simply apply the definition of the z-transform and say, in this case, it's x. So x of z is simply one, plus z to the power minus 1, minus 2, sorry. So remember, what we're doing is we're saying summation from n equals 0 to infinity, x of n, z to the minus n. And we only have two values of n for which x is non-zero. n is 0 and n is 2. Okay. So now we have x, and we have h. The final question asks to find y. So y of z is simply 
the uh, product of uh, h of z and x of z. If you rearrange that, y is simply h of z times x of z. So we can simply take the h that we just found and multiply it by the x that we just found. So y of z equals h of z times x of z equals, this is our h, and this is our x. And you simply multiply the two. And there you have the output in the z-domain. And that would be your final answer.